All right, hey guys, Justin here. Today we are gonna get super nerdy talking about our electrical service laterals. So you can see I took these uh, covers off so you can see inside the panels. And we'll kind of get in here in a moment and take a closer look at what's going on. Uh, but first, just to kind of give you the overview, um, actually first quick, quick disclaimer, we didn't install anything I'm gonna show you today. It was done by electricians, but uh, I understand it pretty well. So. Uh, we'll kind of still get into some nerdy details and explain all of what's going on. So you may have noticed, first of all, there's three panels. There's a big one, which has room for 40 breakers. There's a medium-sized one that has room for 20 breakers. And there's this small room that has, uh, sorry, the small one has room for 12 breakers. So uh, essentially the high level of what's happening is any circuit that's going to get backup power is going to land here. And since uh, we have the bigger generator, we can actually run almost everything off of the backup. So that's why we got more room in this large one. This one will have the non-backup power. Uh, so anything that doesn't get backed up uh, will land in this panel. And this third one is a bit of a mystery. Why do we have three if there's these two? Um, before we get into that, let's go back to the source and see where all this power comes from. All right, well, here we are back at the service entrance. Now you may notice that sound behind me is actually the generators running today. They are doing a pole replacement. It's now the fourth time they've done it where they turn the power off all day. So since part of this is de-energized anyway, I thought this would be a good day to open it up and make this video. Now if you're curious about the details of our generator, leave me a comment and we can do a deep dive on that one. Anyway, here we are. This meter provides 200 amps for anything that is connected to the backup, uh, the backup circuit. This meter is another 200 amps for non-backup. So the way this works, you have the meters come into the disconnect. From this one that's doing the backup, these wires come out, go into this gutter, up into that transfer switch. There's also the load or the wires from the generator itself that go into the transfer switch. It comes back out of the transfer switch and into this load panel. So let's get in here and take a closer look. Okay, so the output from either the meter or the generator, depending on the transfer switch status, comes back to this panel. So there are a few things we have attached to it on this side of the road. Basically, we've got 100 amps for the pump house, 100 amps for the RV pedestal. These four uh, locations are a 200 amp lug kit. So the output from the generator or the meter comes to this panel first, and then out of here, 200 amps goes back down through the gutter and then it comes down here and you can see these big wires are for that 200 amp feed going down into this conduit which goes back to the house which we'll go back to in a second. So again this meter back up from the disconnect to the transfer switch and one way or another comes back. This one up here is the non-backup circuit so you can see from that disconnect the wires go all the way down and straight through into the same conduit. Now one burning question you may be having is about the neutrals. Hey Justin, where do those go? Well, just think of it like Neo. It must always return to the source. So the neutrals all land in this lug kit up here and they end up going back through there into the, ultimately back to the transformer. Okay, so we got six wires going through this conduit four for each hot feed, or sorry, two for each hot feed and one for each neutral. Now let's go follow that conduit and see where it goes on its way back to the house. Okay, we're not quite back to the house yet, but one interesting note is about how the wires get there. So you can see we were all the way back there by the service entrance. You can hear the generator still going. So the wires come underground about 160 feet, if I remember right through into this pull box, which is a concrete box that you can use if you have a long conduit run. So they all pop out of that conduit and basically come over to here and go into that conduit and that extends up another 120 feet into the house that way. So in total it's almost 280 feet of wire and when you have that far to go making turns is difficult. So that's the purpose of this pull box. Also earlier, I realized I said there are six wires. There's actually seven because of that green ground wire, which we'll come back to in a minute. So let's go back inside where we started. 
Okay, we're back. So all seven wires are popping out through the slab into this, uh, well, it was a three inch conduit. It got reduced to two and a half so that it could make a connection into the box. So one circuit, this one is the non backup circuit. So that came from the upper meter. Uh, all three of those land in the bottom of this panel. The other backup circuit are these wires come across into here and up into that panel. So you're probably wondering, hey, what is that other conduit? Well, essentially we did it this way in case we want to feed power out to another building on this side. We'll come out of one of these panels the same way you saw that lug kit on the other side. And then the ground wire comes up into here. They're all bonded together, including the one that comes back down into our Ufer ground here. So that's all the wires, where they came from and how they landed in both of those panels. But I promised to explain what this third one's about. So now we're ready to have that discussion. Okay, so before we talk about the third panel, there's a little bit more details you need to know. The first thing is that there's gonna be a solar array on the house. So we're gonna mount it on the roof because that's the best spot we have for it. Uh, it's gonna be about 10 panels, three and a half kilowatts. Uh, we're required to have it, but we also want to have it because it'll help offset some of our energy usage. So There's gonna be solar panels here. There's a generator feed coming from there Something a lot of people don't know is that solar panels don't work when the power's out However, they also can't be connected to a generator. So what that means uh, The load side out from the generator can't have solar panels pushing power into it at the same time uh, otherwise the generator gets upset and uh, maybe will be damaged. Eric the electrician says it'll be fine because he's tested it, but nonetheless we don't want to have any warranty issues. So that means if we have to land the solar array somewhere, but it can't be on the backup panel. So since we have two feeds anyways, we can land our solar panels in here. And when the power's on, they're making power. We're either using it for anything attached to this or it's gonna send the excess back to the grid. If the power's off, like it is right now, this panel will be dead and this one will still be hot. And so the solar panels will still think the power's off and they won't be trying to push any energy into the generator side of the, um, of, of the circuit. Okay, so with that plan, it solves some of our problems. We can have our solar panels on the house, we can have the generator over there, but there's a downside, and that is that if we have something that consumes a lot of energy, that we want to have the benefit of the solar, but we also want it to be on a backup circuit because uh, it's maybe something critical if the power is going to be out during one of these extended uh, power safety shutoffs, it would be nice to have the best of both worlds. Enter the third panel. So things like the HVAC system, the water heater, some things like that consume quite a bit of energy because they're always running and generating heat or generating AC. So that really would be nice to have the benefit of the solar offset, but it would also be nice if it was running when the power's out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 100 amps out of this panel and 100 amps out of this panel, and they're both gonna land into this, let's call it switcheroo panel. So when this is one way, we can have the feed from this one. When it's flipped over, we can have the feed from this one. So anything connected up here can be switched from either this panel or that panel. And so that is why there's a third one, so that we can offset our energy use, but still be able to flip over those items if there's an extended power outage. Okay, that's a lot of info. Let's dive into even more details with some questions from our fans. Okay, our first question is, hey Justin, why do you feel like you need so much power besides just the 200 amps uh, standard residential service? It's a pretty small house, you know, what are you gonna do with all those amps? Well, anymore the amount of power you need doesn't really scale so much with the size of the house because we have all LED lighting and so forth. So it really has more to do with the number of electrical appliances we're gonna have. So. In our case, we're actually trying to go almost all electric for the whole house. We're gonna have an electric uh, HVAC system, our primary water heater is electric, the oven and stovetop are electric. Uh, someday, maybe we're gonna have an electric car. There's gonna be an electric hot tub. So all of that stuff starts to add up and we wanna be future-proofed, so that's one of the reasons. 
Let's just run down a scenario. Let's say it's Thanksgiving. So it's cold out, the HVAC system's running, that's 20 amps. Now, of course, Peanut was probably out playing in the dirt again, got his paws dirty, he's gonna be in the shower, water heater's running, there's another 30 amps. Let's say uh, somebody's cooking up uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you got the turkey in the oven, you got some mashed potatoes, gravy, corn on the stovetop, all that adds up about 40 amps. Of course, Sharon, she loves doing laundry. She's gonna be doing some laundry dryer, another 30 amps. Uh, you know, I'm pretty lazy. I'm probably gonna be in the hot tub. There's 50 amps. Of course, maybe cousin Jeff comes over. He didn't plan ahead. He wants to charge up his car. Any more level two chargers can go up to 80 amps. So all of that can really add up, could definitely result in a scenario, maybe not as ridiculous as this one, but could easily extend over 200 amps. So therefore we decided to future-proof ourselves with our 400 amp service. Okay, next question. Hey Justin, what size of wires did you use for these lateral runs and why? Uh, well, these are 250 MCM, I guess it's called wires. Uh, the reason for that size is two things. One, you have to be concerned about the ampacity rating of the wire. So any given wire can only have a certain maximum number of amps. At 200, you can use one size down with a 4.0 wire, but there's a second thing you have to be concerned with, which is voltage drop. So voltage drop is a function of the current on the wire and the distance. And as you noted when we were down by the pull box, I mentioned we were close to 280 feet total. So that distance plus that current would result in too high of a voltage drop for a 4.0 wire. So Eric the electrician says we have to go with 250 for that reason. So those are our wire sizes. Uh, the next thing is what about conduit sizes? Well, actually as it turns out, these three inch conduits that come all the way underground are just big enough to hold all six of those wires. You can only put so many wires in a conduit. Uh, so that's why we got the three inch conduit coming across so that we could have uh, the two electrical services at the 200 amps each for 400 total. Okay, I think that's about all the question or all the time we have for now. So if you have more questions, leave me a comment and we'll answer those. All right, that's it. We'll see you on the next episode.